right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so quick note here. I have fired the audio guy or gal. I'm going to get a microphone today. I figure it's a good investment. I, you know, I don't know why I'm having audio issues. I have no idea. But if it's going to help, let's let's get a new microphone. And I, I think it's a good investment. Of course, um, you know, I'm as cheap as anybody you'll ever meet. I'm as stubborn as anybody you'll ever meet. But this is something that I think is necessary. It's a good investment, so I'm going to do it. All right, so this might be the last time uh, we have crappy audio. But I want to share a video here. I want to thank you guys for pointing that out. All right, so I want to share a video here. A Fort Worth Bible Fellowship and this is it's just ridiculous what it's one day after another it's video after video preacher after preacher who they go beyond common sense they go beyond thinking logically and clearly and they will just twist and turn and manipulate the Word of God to mean something other than what it actually says. It's incredible. And they do this in order to fit their Hollywood movie. Alright, because the Hollywood movie is the holy grail of Bible prophecy, apparently. I don't know. I don't know. It, but... Whatever the Bible says, they say oh, that, that's wrong. And then they try to fit this idea into what they saw watching a Nicolas Cage movie. Now, I'm not kidding you. Now, take a listen. It's at the beginning of the kingdom period. Remember, what we've been asking the Lord to give us is what is happening during the millennial reign of Christ, the kingdom of Christ. All right, so the, the millennial, there is no, the, the kingdom of Christ is not a thousand years. I pointed this out, ever, I got to point it out every time. Because it just, people just don't know, apparently. I guess the movie didn't talk about this, but in Luke chapter 1, verse 33, it says, And he shall reign, talking about Jesus, over the house of Jacob forever. And if of his kingdom there shall be no end that's not a thousand years man we are not putting our hope into a thousand year a thousand bonus years no not at all man we're putting our hope into everlasting life now I, I guess Nicholas Cage didn't know that or or, you know, they don't talk about it. One of the two. And so, at the beginning, he says that there is the first resurrection. Alright, the first resurrection. You know what he's talking about, right? Just to make sure, we're going to go to Revelation 20. And then you'll see. Hey, let me highlight that word. You'll see it's mentioned twice in... Revelation 20, and it's in verses 5 and 6. All right, here, maybe, maybe this will help too. We better do it this way, just in case, just so there's no uh, confusion, no doubt about it. The word resurrection is mentioned twice in chapter 20. All right. Now, I know 15 verses, it takes a good five minutes, and it sort of cuts into your Netflix and TikTok time. But I highly encourage you, if you can find five minutes and read chapter 20, and you'll see it for yourself, I would hope. If you actually believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, and that's the key. And the key has always been faith. 
and I, I've talked about this quite a bit, that even today when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. The key is faith. Believing the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God, because it is. Now, he let's back up. He talks about the first resurrection. At the beginning, he says that there is the first resurrection. But I want us to be clear that this being called the first resurrection, it is not the first resurrection. It is uh, the resurrection that happens first before the second resurrection in this text. We know that the first... <laughs> Are you kidding me? The first resurrection is not the first resurrection. That reminds me of Genesis chapter 3 when the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, has God said? Question mark. Huh? Yea, has God said first resurrection? Nay, not the first resurrection. It's actually the second resurrection. Alright, I'm going to get more into that, but it's unbelievable. First resurrection. It is not the first resurrection. That's that's a joke, man. And this guy, this guy has no business preaching the Bible at all. He does not believe the Bible. And he's and he's too cowardly to admit it. I guarantee it. Just like most everybody that teaches this they will not admit that they don't believe the Bible they hold in their hands. Because they know it makes them look stupid. It makes them look faithless. Now, these guys, you probably, if you went to his, his uh, church website, it probably has a, you know, statement of faith. And they probably say, oh, we believe the Bible is the, un, you know, the inspired, perfect word of God. But then, they don't quote from any such Bible. It's incredible, the world that we live in. It is uh, the resurrection that happens first before the second resurrection in this text. All right, Correct. so Not I want you to follow along. Listen and try to figure out what he's talking about. This is insanity. So he's saying that Jesus is not the first resurrection. But Jesus is the first resurrection. Listen. Not the first resurrection. It is uh, the resurrection that happens first before the second resurrection in this text. We know that the first resurrection was Christ the Lord. He is the one who was resurrected first. He is the first fruit of the resurrected ones. So Christ is the first resurrection. The title that's given here to this resurrection in the text is making certain that it is not confused with the second resurrection. It says <laughs> that blessed second what? resurrection. He is the first fruit of the resurrected ones. So Christ is the first resurrection. So Christ is the first resurrection. Okay, so in Revelation 20, when it says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, that's Jesus. Blessed and holy are we that are born of God. Blessed and holy are we that have part in his resurrection on such the second death has no power right now the second death has no power over us whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believest thou this right now the second death has no power over us. Now if you can figure that out, 
then you ought to be able to figure out that judgment has already been given to us. All right? Nothing can change the judgment that God has made for us. God has judged us pure. Blessed and holy is he who... <clears throat> Blessed is they whom the Lord will not impute sin. I think I butchered that. Let's just confirm it because I don't want you to think I'm making stuff up. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. This judgment has already been given to us by the Lord, by God Almighty. We are born of the Spirit of God. We shall never die. The second death has no power over us right now. We are partakers of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has died, defeated death, and rose back to life and ascended to heaven. And we will follow him. We that are born of God. It's amazing. This guy, he don't see it because he don't believe the Bible that he holds in his, in his hands. He don't believe the words that he speaks. So he says the first resurrection is not the first resurrection. Because if the first resurrection is the first resurrection, well, that's going to conflict with Nicolas Cage in the Hollywood movies that we want, love to watch. huh? The title that's given here to this resurrection in the text is making certain that it is not confused with the second resurrection it's making certain that it's not confused with the second resurrection I, I can't wrap my head around that man what are you talking about you're at oh, you're wanting to say that there are three resurrections without saying there are three resurrections and there are not three resurrections there's one resurrection it's Jesus Christ and he has resurrected and ascended to heaven and we follow him we that are born of God that's the only resurrection now we go back to 1st Corinthians and uh, understand I mean this is all throughout the Bible but <clears throat> for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. One resurrection, it's Jesus. And when he returns, we will be resurrected. All right, this is, we are resurrect, we are following him. It's his resurrection that allows us to be resurrected. There are no other future resurrections. This is not Hollywood movie. This is not science fiction. This is the word of God. It says that blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Now, the ones who are of the first resurrection it says are the ones who did not receive the mark of the beast no has he ever read this he got he, i mean you gotta look down and read what's it say here like he don't even know what it says man you don't know what it says beforehand you got no business all right whatever did not bow down to his image did not worship the beast, the ones that came through tribulation and those who are what? of... What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. What in the world did he just say? The ones that came through tribulation and... The ones that came through tribulation. Now, where in the hell is he getting that? Because it's not here. I mean, he just... Oops. He just made something up. He just lied. He just told a lie. Right, and this is this is what all these guys do. They lie because they are of the devil. Alright? 
and you know that we read about that in John chapter 8 where there is no truth in the devil okay no truth at all and Jesus is having a conversation with these guys and he says ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do now you know that they told you in the last time there should come mockers walking after their own lust knowing this first oh buddy 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 where's this at oh I thought it was in here I don't know the Bible I need to read oh how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do all right he was a murderer from the beginning and both not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaks a lie he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of it all right and I could show um, other verses as well talking about people walking after their own lust knowing this first that there should come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and this is what this guy is doing he is scoffing and mocking the Word of God all right so we go to Revelation 22 and what's it say something here it says if any man shall add unto these things okay let's go back here for I testify unto every man that hears the words of this prophecy of the prophecy of this book if any man shall add unto these things God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book did not worship the beast the ones that came through tribulation and and what's he do he adds something that is not there all right he's a liar and by his own words he has put a curse upon himself all right because he does not trust what the Bible actually says what the Word of God actually says he does not trust what God actually says and he is twisting and lying about the words of God now, this is dangerous stuff and the astonishing thing of it all is that this guy is teaching the same thing that nearly every single other preacher in the world today teaches and go one step further it's absolutely amazing that Jesus foretold us that this would happen and he said it was gonna happen and it's happening and people still don't see it it's incredible I mean it's like uh, uh, Jesus is standing in front of uh, those guys oh what verse is that goodness sake so there's got to be one of these two I hope no 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 okay so he's standing in front of those guys and he's like how can you hear how do you not hear the words even as I stand in front of you or something like that oh it was right there it was right there I had it right there right there why do ye not understand my speech even because you cannot hear my word he's standing right in front of them and he's telling them the plain truth and they don't understand a single thing that he says they can't hear a word that he speaks it's incredible that this goes on uh, it's incredible that Jesus oh what verse is that behold I have told you before Jesus tells us that this is going to happen when Jesus is asked what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world 
Jesus answers and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. This is about the sign of his coming and of the end of the world. This is it. This, it's not wars and science fiction crap. It's the deception. The liars and the deceivers. The evil men and seducers of the world. Because of the deception that is in the world. Not because of, not because of what you watch on CNN and Fox News. It's not about that at all. It's about the deception. And I pointed this out uh, numerous times in Luke 18. I mean, we have evidence of this in the flood. There were only eight souls saved. Sodom and Gomorrah, there wasn't even ten righteous. In Luke 18, it says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry out, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? And that's incredible. And then we go to Matthew 24. Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So if things were allowed to continue as they are right now, there will come a point where there will be nobody saved. And it has nothing to do with wars. It has nothing to do with people getting killed. Oh, that guy's a Christian. Well, let's kill him. No, that's not it at all. That's not at it at all. If did you not, did you already forget how it says, "For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many." There, there will be many that will be claiming to be Christians, saying that Jesus is the Christ. You see it? In the last days, the last day, there will be many claiming to be Christian. So here, when it says, except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Here, this is talking about people that are actually saved. There's going to be very, very few. And if they were allowed to continue, if the days were allowed to continue, there wouldn't be anybody saved. There would be a bunch of people, many, there will be many people claiming to be Christians. But they will be liars. And what do we see in the world today? Many people come in the name of Jesus saying Jesus is the Christ and they are deceiving many. Things are getting worse and worse and worse, not because of what you're watching on television, but because of the deceptions and the deceivers that are in the world today. It's, an, it's incredible. And, uh, you know, look, what the bottom line is, you either trust God or you trust these guys that, have, that don't trust God. I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous to trust what these men say. And by the way, that's a nice suit that he's got there, right? I mean, he's a sharp look looking guy, a sharp looking gentleman. He's a great talker, smooth talker. He's got the headset. He's got a good microphone, right? Everybody can hear him plainly, but. The words that come out of his mouth, they are not from God. Many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. All right, now, there, I guess I should show, uh, I was going to talk about the resurrection. And I did a little bit, I, I suppose. Uh, um... Oh, yeah, I know what I was going to show. So, uh, it's obvious here, we can go back to Matthew 24, when Jesus is asked, what is the sign of thy coming of the end of the world? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. We are gathered together. Right? The angels gather us together. There's only one gathering. There's no... So, oh, Jesus didn't know there were supposed to be two gatherings. Right? 
And it doesn't even make any logical sense to say Jesus comes twice. Where did he go? Where does he go? And Jesus doesn't mention anything. I mean, the whole thing is stupid. Jesus comes one time, and he comes at the end of the world. Now, it cannot be the end of the world if it's not the end of the world. All right, and let's go, let's go back to Matthew 13. I'll just point out a couple places, and then I'll end the video here. Matthew 13, Jesus gives a parable for the end of the world. Oops, let's go up here, figure out where I'm at. No, not Mark 13. What I say? Let's go to Matthew 13. Matthew 13, where Jesus gives the parable of the wheat and the tares. All right, and this is the the he describes the harvest as the end of the world. The harvest is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. All right, the harvest is when we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. All right, the harvest is when the angels gather together the elect. This is the harvest, the end of the world, the reaper. The angels are the reapers, or the reapers are the angels, however you want to look at it. All right, this is the one-time deal. It's not going to happen twice. Man, you get a, you got to get away from the dispensationalist and the futurist, all right? Get away from those guys and just get into the Word of God. Get into the Bible and start believing the words that you're reading. These are the words from God. These are not the words of men. What you're seeing on the screen here, these are from God. All right, so we this is exactly what's going on right now. We have the wheat and the tares growing together. And then there's going to come a harvest, which is the end of the world. All right, so there's only one resurrection for us and that's the resurrection of Jesus just like we read in 1 Corinthians 15 he is the resurrection and then when he returns we will follow him all right he's led the way for us now to us it seems like oh there's Jesus he resurrected and then the second resurrection is us no no yeah okay but not really because he is the only resurrection and we follow him he is our leader we follow him and so it's really it's only one resurrection because when we're resurrected it's not our resurrection it is his resurrection because he has led the way and we are partakers of his resurrection he has opened the door for us uh, so the idea of multiple resurrections, it, it's not true. And it really, if there was another resurrection, then it would nullify what Jesus Christ has done for us. All right, we can go to Daniel chapter 12, and I'll try to end it on this. I get long-winded sometimes on this, but it's this is evident all throughout the Bible. <clears throat> all right, so in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, it says... And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, you can't have, well, this is the one-time resurrection, and then after this, there's another resurrection. Well, Daniel didn't know about this third resurrection. This is the only resurrection, and it's because Jesus Christ has resurrected we are partakers of his resurrection and of course we see the judgment of God prophesied all throughout the Bible if you are not saved on the last day then the judgment of God is for you if you're saved today the judgment of God has already been given to you all right it's it's pretty simple stuff right now we are kings and priests under God I feel like I could do this all day but and I feel like it's important <clears throat> it's important to point out the in Exodus 19 God called them the children of Israel a kingdom of priests and an holy nation 
in 1 Peter chapter 2. He calls us, he tells us that we are a royal priesthood. And Jesus Christ, of course, tells us to go and preach the gospel to every creature. We are preachers. We are the priests of God and of Christ. We are kings and priests unto God. Right now, those of us that are born of God, right now we are royalty. Right now. He has made us kings and priests unto God. How can you, and, you're, and right now we reign with Christ, right? How can you rightly say that you're saved? How can you rightly say that you don't reign with Christ and you're saved? It doesn't make any sense. How can you rightly say that you are saved but not reigning with Christ? Or that you don't reign with Christ? If you, if you don't reign with Christ, you're not saved. If Christ is not reigning in your life right now, you're not saved. Jesus says, I will make my abode in them. All right, so we go like to uh, John chapter 14. I'm getting fired up about this stuff. I really do because it just so many people don't understand the very simplicity of the gospel good news of Jesus Christ. It's, un it's incredible, really. All right, so um, where am I at here? All right, so all I know what I'm looking for, I'm looking for John 15, where it says, Without me, ye can do nothing. Abide in me, and I in you. That's talking about right now. It's not talking about futurism. You know, it's not a future event in a future. You're going to abide in Christ. No, you're abiding in Christ right now. The moment you're saved, you abide in him, and he abides in you, and you have everlasting life and nothing can ever take that away and Jesus goes so far to say that except um, and without me I'm sorry for without me ye can do nothing all right so you there's no way for you to be saved and for Christ to not be abiding in you right now there's, it's not possible. Okay, the only way for you to be saved is if Christ is abiding in you right now. For without me, ye can do nothing. All right, so uh, I probably went too far, but I just wanted to show you know another example. A day after day, preacher after preacher, teaching the Nicholas Cage doctrine of devils, really. They want to preach all oh, the left behind. That's the word of God. And it's not the word of God. It has nothing to do with God at all. It's very godless. And the people got to stop worshiping Nicolas Cage and Kirk Cameron and the Hollywood elitist and the liars all around the world. Okay, so that's it. I appreciate you guys listening. And just a reminder again that I will be getting a new microphone and would not surprise me if at all I spent a bunch of money on a new microphone and it don't work that's the story of my life right there okay alright but talk to y'all later